creating a custom global color palette and assigning it to all elements in your site um, and being able to update them globally has always been the dream of uh, producing something using WordPress. With GeneratePress and with the latest alpha release of GeneratePress, that becomes much more of a possibility and, and very easy possibility with the option to provide a global color palette. In this short video, let's have a look at how these color, color features can be implemented in a nice and easy way and what's coming up with GeneratePress in the next version. Now, this version is not is, is still an alpha release. So on this site, I'll, I'll post all the links uh, below the video. This is an alpha release and it's not to be used on production websites, um, but you can actually download this alpha release and this affects uh, GeneratePress, the free version. So this global color palette is available through GeneratePress, um, uh, the free version of GeneratePress and not just the premium version. Now, what is GeneratePress? GeneratePress is my go-to theme for all the websites that I built for myself and for all my clients. Um, it has an excellent rating, more than a thousand reviews, high star reviews, three million downloads and 80,000 happy customers. It's the fastest um, theme out there um, in terms of page size, loads less than 7.5 kilobytes and uh, no dependencies as um, no JavaScript dependencies, nothing. This is one of the, the best themes out there and it's fully accessible to boot. Um, you, if you go for the premium version, you get a lot more features. You uh, generate press premium makes this a complete builder as in it, it becomes a block based builder. Uh, along with the wonderful generate blocks which allow you to um, do a lot more and there's more uh, improvements to the generate blocks as well coming in this um, alpha release so let's have a quick look at what's what's happening with with uh, generate press as such um, and you get all of these features available for like a 60 dollar price per year or for a one-time fee, you can use this on up to 500 sites. So a wonderful um, plugin, a wonderful set of, a wonderful team and a wonderful set of plugins all by Thomas Byrne and his crew uh, at Generate Press. So let's have a quick look. I have two sites here, um, one, with the current version of generate press and generate blocks as is and another with the updated alpha versions uploaded here as you can see all the plugins here are the alpha versions whereas the plugins here in this other installation are all the current versions they are the most up-to-date versions i have an extra plugin here but i'll explain why that is so um, and this is our current setup so the theme is I've removed all the themes. The theme is currently just generate press current version in this version and I have um, so I've set up two local sites. The other one is also generate press but here we have alpha version. So alpha versions of all the plugins on this one I'm just calling it generate press new and this one is generate press and I've created a realtor website um, using generate press premium and um, the only difference being that we've just updated all the plugins to the new version of generate press now what does global colors bring in now previously if i needed to set colors across um, generate press across my site i would go and i would be editing my pages i'm going to go edit the home page let's go there and let's do the same um, for the home page now this is an amazing uh, page but let's see how we would have edited this content so if I wanted to I could have gone here and added a button or added a styling or some colors now let's imagine that I needed to change the color of this button so I've decided that um, my client has come to me and they're saying basically that the buttons now need to match the brand colors and the brand colors have changed for example currently the brand color is is this dark bluish and um, the other other opposite color for that is this gold color so let's imagine that we've decided to go for a change in colors completely in which case um, I would have to basically go and update almost 
all my templates, all my um, everywhere. I would have to do this update in multiple different locations. For example, here I would have to come in and change this color. And you notice the colors are not meeting my brand. Now to meet my brand, I would have had to go to um, and added a plugin. And I would have had to manage a color palette here, which would then uh, update my color palette. So I needed to manage things multiple different ways to make these changes and further if I needed to customize my color palette uh, wasn't an easy option um, and you'll see I'm still loading the default colors loaded by generate press not my current pal color palette I would have had to set each one by this or I would have had to use that color palette plugin and set it up so it, it causes several difficulties and this is this has been my request to Tom for quite a while now almost three years ago I raised a request but he's been following up the the generate press team is the uh, is really really good at coming back to you with uh, improvements all the time and this is a great great improvement personally I, f I find this um, will impact my workflow a lot um, and I find this really really useful that's why I just wanted to share this quickly so what do we what do we do uh, so let's imagine that the color palette has changed now as part of this change or this alpha release now this is not in production I'm just using this on a dummy uh, local local installation as you can see I'm on localhost now the color palette has completely changed in the past our color palette used to um, our colors used to be this way so you you would not even have a color palette a global color palette you had to set it in a in an additional plugin now you get a global custom color palette and you can assign this color palette to every element and every item and further to boot that with that the generate blocks which is the add-on plugin that provides this um, that makes your theme into a, a block based builder um, also is fully integrated with this color palette so let me show you what what is possible so let's imagine that um, I wanted to um, change the overall color right you notice my um, default custom color that I be accent color that I'm using throughout the site the accent color is this blue it's used in headings it's used throughout right so I want to improve that I want to change that my marketing team has come to me or my client has come to me and said basically let's change that I'm just going to go and change this and let's imagine that they've changed it into like a purple right some kind of this bright purple and you notice that change took place almost immediately in most places so what happens let's have a look in the front end how much change that has brought in 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 one fail swoop it's updated everywhere everywhere that I've actually used that color it's going to update throughout and it's also updated my footer elements wherever I've used that color it's just updated throughout the site I know this looks ugly but this is exactly what I what we mean by global color palette so you can not just assign it to certain elements you can assign it to any elements and in one click I've changed it right so I, I'm not happy with that I need to set it back so as easy as going to your global color palette and changing it back to and the benefit of this approach means that you can just update once and have everything updated in one go right? similar to the global color palette we're also getting dynamic typography in this version in this alpha release of uh, generate press so what does that mean so basically when we go to generate press um, into the customizer itself you now have an option uh, when you go into customize and we go into general let's first turn on dynamic typography yeah let's do that and once we do that I'll just hit publish and yes there is a slight difference in my typography so that they do mention that you just have to be careful with uh, dynamic typography the other thing I'm, I'm going to do is also underline all the links in um, um, not on hover basically so that um, any links in my site I want them to have an underline 
and I'll show you why that is important because um, that's a that's a pet hate of mine at the moment with uh, the way generate press worked and I used to use a lot of complex CSS to achieve this let's let's go back so when I now go to typography and I compare that to typography on um, generate press as usual you will see that um, the font has been set to Montserrat as usual um, and let's have a look so it's been set to Montserrat and um, and you get some some of these amazing options where you don't have to worry about fonts when you particularly resize so if as I go scale down the fonts scale down properly um, as well I can I, you have these options now a lot more control over setting type so they talk about a, all of these features here so in the typography um, you can set all the Google fonts as well as your own fonts and also the typography manager has had lots of improvements here so if I need to get it back like this looks a little slightly bolder um, the Montserrat regular so if I went with the bold version or just the regular I'll just go with the normal and uh, but I want in terms of my headings yeah so the heading tools in particular here I want them to be not default but bold there we go so now we brought back the the look and feel that I wanted I also want to do the same with uh, my heading level ones make those bold now this does throw some of the templates but as soon as we go get out of this alpha release we'll be able to import um, entire sites with, with all the settings um, the correct way so I'm really keen to you start using some of these features um, the other feature that um, is barely mentioned here was the underlining of links now on my own site um, I've had to add custom CSS several lines of custom CSS to ensure that uh, the links are always underlined um, it's an accessibility feature because if your contrast between your text and your link is not high as with this this particular theme color this particular design uh, calls for a, a style or a, a link color which is very close to the body text as you can see this color is very close to your body text color which is on to two is very close to this so if I was to create a, a link which I will do now let's see see how that looks so I'm going to edit this page I'm going to create a link to my um, I'll just say click here for styles right um, and let's do this on both sides um, both versions so the current version um, I will go here edit this page so this is my uh, this is the current version and I've already created a link click here for the styles page let's do the same here I'm going to select this go okay let's just look for the styles page and link to it and you notice straight away it's underlined for me I'm just going to hit update whereas this one even though it has the it I've applied the uh, necessary styles um, this one is not unless I add some custom CSS it's very difficult for me to underline all the links automatically I'll have to ensure that I go here select this go in and possibly go underline right and even that feature is not available quite easily here it's quite quite difficult to set this actually the only way uh, I've been doing it is on my side is by applying a custom CSS um, to make that work and as you can see it doesn't work in the editor for me but I know it is going to work on the front end but I've added the required um, custom CSS using a same using again Tom's plugin one of generate presses plugin to add the custom CSS and you probably don't want to do this so this makes it a lot easier um, to manage as well as less CSS to load and also works pretty well right so that's the sec third thing is underlining links another feature which goes hidden um, which is quite completely hidden but it's uh, very very essential for both SEO and accessibility purposes is um, 
what's what what's known as dynamic um, HTML attributes um, uh, yeah so as you can see the navigation has been given a label of toolbar and this throughout this site is found 54 such area labels I'm just going to go look for area labels um, wherever there's pop-ups or drop-downs in the menu it's it's highlighting all of this is telling um, is telling uh, devices um, such as screen readers what the intent of that particular content is and makes them more understandable and this helps both search engines as well as users who have difficulty uh, visual difficulties um, as in when when screen readers read this out these this area labels actually help in in uh, yeah area levels are, are a big help okay so that's a, another quick look at another feature called dynamic HTML let's also have a look at what else is coming through so in terms of other features coming through if we go to um, the generate blocks side of things they've come up with flexbox finally so css flexbox with ie 11 being dropped the entire grid layout is getting the flex feature um, with this new version of uh, generate blocks generate blocks alpha release um, they finally implemented css flexbox into the grid layout now grid is one of four blocks provided by the generate blocks plugin it's an amazing way of handling um, handling blocks rather than come up with 50 different blocks or like other block plugins are providing at the moment for every scenario possible and then thereby making your site so heavy that it becomes slow generate press and generate blocks team approach this with just four blocks now this is a the template library is a premium feature but otherwise you have a block to create layouts called grid a, a container to organize your layouts and color them and style them uh, a buttons block to manage buttons basically and a headline block that handles rich text um, and icons so you can create icons with this but let's have a look at the grid block and what it brings so when we want to lay out things um, you would use grids now with this version of grids let's let, let's see, let's create a simple grid let's create a grid with um, you could go half and half let's go something like this where i have a, an item on the left um, so i have a grid item on the left and when i select that I notice that it's 25% and the item on the right is 75%. Try to do the same thing in um, in the in the previous version. So I'll go to the sample page and let's just delete what we have here. I'll try and put in a grid. And this is what you used to get. Um, let's go there. Notice um, you don't actually see the boundaries of the actual grid with this approach with the tinier buttons you can actually see continuously until you start adding things you know exactly where the grid is this used to the previous version used to cause trouble sometimes when you didn't know where you were dragging your things into now you know exactly where you can drag things into to create your layouts the other thing you'll notice is with the previous version with one of the items selected um, you now you now get the flex box uh, options uh, previously if i selected um, we only had um, plain css options um, and percentage based grids the with flex box you can do much much better let's have a look at what this what 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 let's look at what is what this means for us so i'll just go and choose an image to set this up um, I'll just choose an existing image let's just uh, pop in this and we'll add some content I'll just go um, with a heading I'll just go heading and um, and we'll also add um, insert after we will add some piece of text uh, let's see just copy paste uh, a bunch of text a couple of times let's do that and let's do that again okay 
So let's do the same on this. Let's go choose an image and we'll choose the same image. And you'll notice that there's some padding automatically being created. Now this causes more trouble than actually uh, benefits sometimes. So I'm just going to go, this is my heading. What did we call that there? We'll just call it heading here again. Heading old. And um, I'll just put in a paragraph and that. We'll add a couple of para paragraphs, um, same as here. Now, the fonts are slightly different. That's okay. Now, with the uh, old way of doing things, if I navigate up to the, um, the grid, I have a horizontal gap of 30. I can still set that in this new way. So I can go horizontal gap of say 30. There we go. Nice. Now the key difference is going to be how, how things get managed as you scale things up or down. So if I go to the tablet mode or the mobile mode, compare that to the tablet mode and the mobile mode here. And you might want to say, I don't want to, at this tablet mode, notice how small the image has become. I really don't want to um, do it this way. One option would have been to set the um, container size and go, okay, I want to set the container to 50% and uh, this container to 50% and all that could be quite difficult. And that's all you could do in this old version. In the new version, you can let, um, you can, you because it's auto, auto width, you can set things known as the flex, flex box, right? So you can say, you can allow things to grow and shrink automatically so let's do that i'm stuff so you can actually ensure that the um, the it, it scales well so you could go i want to grow uh, and shrink and, and you can also set a basis this is where you would go don't go beyond a certain size so you can set this to like pixel dimensions or a percentage based dimensions where regardless of what size it's going to stick to that size um, here in this case because we've set it to flex grow it's actually taking up the full room but we can set it to flex um, only to that basis so i can say 200 pixels or 300 pixels um, not three 300 pixels and and it will fit that so you can say don't shrink beyond a certain size um, don't grow beyond a certain size or actually grow and just take up whatever room is available and this makes it a lot more efficient and as well as fluid and becomes such a powerful tool in creating some complex layouts. I'm so looking forward to you building stuff with Flexbox finally. And the magic of Flexbox is, as you can see here in this explanation that they're providing, where <clears throat> as you scale and you don't want the image to grow, shrink beyond a certain size by using this shrink option, you would set the shrink shrink to not allow it to shrink beyond a certain size or you could set a basis so that it just fixes to that those dimensions that you want the other advantage with this new layout is that you can actually see where you are dragging things into so for example if i was to create um, another grid here quickly i'll just go add um, I'll just go add one more grid item. I'll just go to the top and uh, get out of here. I'll get out into desktop mode. Um, and then I'll add one more grid item, uh, for example. And you'll see when you add a grid item, these dotted lines indicate where exactly you need to drag an item into. So it was previously difficult to just drag things in. Um, you didn't know where you were dragging things in. Now, am I dragging it to the bottom? which means it goes here, or am I dragging it into this particular column or into a container here, like that. So I can just click and drag into a container um, uh, or even a, a paragraph, piece of paragraph, just click and drag it into that container. There we go. Um, and so these borders help us do that. You also, because uh, grid, grid items can now have auto-widths, um, so you don't have to worry too much about defining things. 
the color color picker improvements have also come in um, and and what what that means is basically in the past for example if I wanted to create a buttons block search for buttons which is the other blocks so this is one of the four blocks provided by generate blocks uh, free premium provides you with template library as well but if I just go to buttons and I add a button um, I can now go and get the theme colors rather than any colors. So I can just use, okay, I want my button to be styled this way. And on hover, I want my button to inherit this color. And so now my button is going to be nicely styled. So if I update this and view this page, with just a couple of clicks, we have like a nice looking button, which is still in my brand and keeping to my brand colors. Um, and so, very very easily done uh, this would would be quite difficult otherwise you need to just remember your colors and select your colors or use a color palette uh, provide a plugin an additional plugin that needs to be loaded and further advantage is generate press has become even smaller it used to be around 30 kilobytes it's now 7.5 kilobytes fully loaded which is awesome um, so do give it a try I would highly recommend so but try it out on a temporary site and uh, this should be released uh, this should be releasing in shortly after all the testing this will be released and uh, do play around with generate press if you like uh, please give this a uh, video a like and uh, do subscribe also feel free to download um, generate press I'll leave a link to generate press premium as well as generate press um, generate blocks with this toolkit, you'll be able to build anything you want.